When it comes to relationships, a genuine connection is everything. Only when we're with people who get us, like really get us, can we be our true selves. So find a better connection with eHarmony, the dating app that helps you be more true to yourself. eHarmony gets to know you better so they can match you better with people who will really get you. Make a genuine connection. Take eHarmony's compatibility quiz today and get someone who gets you. On today's Smart 7, Dr. Strike enters day four, FBI arrest Pentagon, Leaker and lots more. It's Friday the 14th of April, it's National Gardening Day and happy birthday Peter Capaldi. The Smart 7, it's news but not the news. The strike by around 47,000 junior doctors in England is entering its fourth day and there's still no sign of a pay deal. Their union, the British Medical Association, is asking the government to join talks with the mediation service ACAS. Home Office Minister Chris Phillips says a 35% rise is not affordable. The Secretary of State for Health's door is open if the BMA are willing to suspend their strike action and drop the 35% demand. But I would urge the BMA to suspend these strikes while those talks do take place. NHS bosses, meanwhile, are concerned about patient safety while staff are on the picket lines. Dr Mark Harmon is an A&E clinician who says his colleagues deserve a decent wage for the conditions they're working in. He's been covering shifts in South London and gave an insight into his day. It's been very busy this afternoon and quite stressful. The department's full. But everybody's worked tirelessly to look after our patients. So it leads me just to say I'm fully supportive of the junior doctors and their actions. I'm sorry it's come to this, and pay really is just the tip of the iceberg. And how would Labour stop doctors leaving the NHS? Deputy Leader Angela Rayne has been answering that on Times Radio. We would have a bespoke scheme to deal with their specific issue, but we have to also up our game when it comes to bringing more medical places forward, which is why we'd end the loophole in the non-DOM status to pay for over 10,000 new medical training places. The FBI has made an arrest as it investigates the suspected leak of military documents. They appear to show a wide range of information, including potential vulnerabilities in Ukraine's defences, as well as the number of UK special forces allegedly active there. The suspect's been named as Jack Texiera, a 21-year-old National Guardsman and IT operator. He's said to have posted the information on Discord, a social media platform popular with gamers. One of the members of his online group, which was called Thug Shaker Central, has shared more about Texera. Any claims that he is a Russian operative or pro-Russian is categorically false. He is not interested in helping any foreign agencies with their attack on the US or other countries. President Biden said on Thursday he was concerned, but there was nothing of great consequence in the leak. And Pentagon spokesman Brigadier General Pat Ryder told the press a review is underway. We do have stringent guidelines in place for safeguarding classified and sensitive information. This was a deliberate criminal act, a violation of those guidelines. Joe Biden's become the first American leader to address the Irish Parliament since 1995 as his visit to the Republic continues. He praised the enduring strength of the Irish-US relationship and spoke of America's duty to support Ukraine in the face of Russian aggression. The president had a busy day as he planted a tree in Dublin's Phoenix Park and also rang the peace bell installed to mark the 10th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. Lord Mayor of Dublin Caroline Conroy is pleased he's there. He really loves the fact that he has his Irish heritage here and it's great now President Biden is coming back and we're here to welcome him home to Ireland. Biden didn't speak at Stormont while in Northern Ireland where power sharing still suspended as the DUP continues to boycott the process. But he did speak about the situation with the Irish Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar. Obviously is keen to be supportive of the British and Irish governments uh, in trying to get the institutions back up and running again, but doesn't want to be overbearing or interfering either, so very much a supportive approach. New York's appointed a rat czar to lead the city's fight against the rodents. Residents called in almost 3.2 million rat sightings to the city's 311 service request line over the past year. Mayor Eric Adams advertised in December for someone with a killer instinct and was not opposed to wholesale slaughter to help battle rats in the streets and subway tunnels. It came with a salary of up to $170,000. Kathleen karadi has been unveiled as the new hire and is now officially the Director of Rodent Mitigation in New York. 
bloodthirsty is not a word you usually see in a job description, and it's certainly not a word I usually describe myself. But I have to say, the Ratsar ad got my attention. You'll be seeing a lot of me, and a lot less rats. <laughs> To come on the Smart 7, Colin Farrell's been back in the makeup department and tributes to a fashion icon. Right after this. When it comes to relationships, a genuine connection is everything. Only when we're with people who get us, like really get us, can we be our true selves. So find a better connection with eHarmony, the dating app that helps you be more true to yourself eHarmony gets to know you better so they can match you better with people who will really get you. Make a genuine connection. Take eHarmony's compatibility quiz today and get someone who gets you. Welcome back. Thursday night saw Europa League quarter-final first leg action. Man United hosted Sevilla at Old Trafford and, well, for 84 minutes, things were going pretty well. Two early goals from loan signing Marcus Sabitza saw United take a comfortable lead before a disastrous eight minutes at the end of the game saw two own goals, which left the score at 2 all. That means United must win next week in Spain if they're to progress to the semis and manager Eric Ten Hag wasn't too happy with how things went. I think we had the game in the hand. We were 2 0 up. Uh, we should have scored a 3 or 4 nil even. I think the game was totally on us. And then yeah, we conceded two own goals. And that's, I say, bad luck. Uh, we have to deal with it. Of course, we have to learn. We have to kill the game. Uh, but uh, still, yeah, everything is open for next game. Colin Farrell's going to reprise his role as Batman villain The Penguin in a new spin-off series. The Oscar-nominated actors appeared in a trailer covered in scars and prosthetics. The series from director Matt Reeves is set after the event of 2022's The Batman, starring Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne and following the death of mob boss Comine Falcone. It's coming to HBO Max in 2024. Can you imagine the people saying my name on the streets after you're gone? That would mean something. <laughs> the new king Pentagon. Dame Mary Quant is being remembered as a trailblazer, genius and true icon following her death at 93. Tributes have come from across the fashion world from model Twiggy, photographer David Bailey and Vogue editor Alexandra Shulman. Sadie Frost, who directed a documentary about her, says her impact on British fashion, history, women's rights and popular culture was vast. A v a museum exhibition focused on her career opens in Glasgow next month. Quant was known for her swinging 60s style like the mini skirt and hot pants. Here she is back in 85 speaking about the importance of fashion. Rest in peace, Mary. I feel fashion's about life. It's about everything. It's about the way we, we sit, the way we move, the way we talk, the style of voice. It's about food, what we eat. It, it's there. It's about everything. You've been listening to The Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes, we'll give you the world. 